Hey there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another Hunter Classic video. Now, this hunt is once again taking part on Timber Gold Trails as I continue my search for basically I'm looking for a 200 plus scoring mule deer typical and I'm looking for even bigger and cooler non tips and any rares or anything that we can come across that is trophy quality or rare or just cool, that's what I'm looking for. So, we'll start off, I was looking at this buck and I was planning on taking him with the crossbow as I'd been using the bow and the crossbow mainly recently, but I also had my 9.3 just in case I needed to take any longer shots. But something told me don't just shoot that buck, just come and look over the edge, because quite often where there's one mule deer buck, there's more. And I was right, I saw a couple of mule deer bucks that weren't like with him close but I guess they could have been part of this group and he got split up and amongst them was this really really big looking one so I had my eyes set on him and because I'd just given a call to try and draw that other buck close they had started to come to me this was a bit of a problem because I realised that the area that I was sat on or led on in the end wasn't exactly great for getting a shot but the wolves were worrying me and I wanted to get them in and get a shot at that big buck before before anything went wrong so I pulled out the 9.3 I thought I'll shoot him and just get him down and just be done with it you know don't risk having the wolves spook it or anything but he went behind that bush and i just didn't want to take a shot and miss like i was i i was fairly confident with it but i thought just wait and because i know that mule deer like i said travel in groups quite often i thought well maybe there is just a couple over there but let's just wait and see so you can see here I'm lining up hoping to take the shot on this buck but something was just telling me to just hold off. I could have easily dropped him so many times here but something just said to me just hold off, just hold off, there's going to be something else. And so I start looking around thinking what what's giving me, because sometimes I've, I've had that every time that there's been a non-tip or a rare or something. I always get that feeling that just just hold off a minute, maybe there's something else. And maybe it's just as I play the game more, I know what the animals in Classic are like. And as you can see here, the big buck is now crossing the river and he's coming straight to me. I didn't realise just how bad the position I was in is. And I'm going to say this now, the animals that do get shot in this clip were both body hits. And I'm not proud of that, of course. They're not great shots. So... It is what it is. They both went down along this small stretch of river anyway, but I didn't really feel good about those shots. So there's a decent buck in front, and then the big buck just behind that. And then something told me, just look over in that bush again. And of course, there was a non-tip. A really decent size one as well. Actually the same size as my last mule deer non-tip, which I found interesting. And something else that was making me extremely cautious was I knew that there was wolves somewhere behind me. There was a really high wolf spawn. But I just thought this buck just looked gigantic. And I was considering maybe just taking the shot on him and then trying to track the non-tip. But then I thought it's going to be slightly hard to track him probably if they all split up and trying to work out where he's going. Now what really, really messed this up for me was the fact that the smaller buck came in front of the big buck. Because like you could see in the water there was one buck in front of that bigger buck. And I just knew, because the quietest thing I had was the crossbow, that as soon as I tried to take a shot, they were going to hear it and spook. And I also couldn't, do I couldn't get a lead down shot because the angle just wouldn't work. And of course, they came up and they came too close and they spooked. So I thought, right, I'll line up and try and at least drop the non-tip. And we'll see if I can, you know, get one of them down and then I will just have to track the other one. Now you can see they split up and run here. The big buck ends up running along the shoreline, but it doesn't spook the non-tip and the other small buck that was with him. You can see the big buck just running off and he was just calming down there where he was just slowing down where I just put the scope on him again. So I thought, right, let's just call, let's just wait. They're still coming into the call. Give this one another call and just make sure that this non-tip gets here at least and I get the non-tip down. I then saw that non-tip start to run. 
Semi started to panic, so I marked where the big buck was, but it was only the, the fact that I think the wolves were around that slightly spooked the mule deer non-tip, who then ended up coming up at the angle I didn't expect him to, and he was sort of glitching on my spot, and that's why that ended up being a body hit. However, I could still see the big buck just slightly over in the distance on the opposite side of the bank again now. I was just trying to see if I could see the non-tip running there. The scope sometimes helps me get a bit of a clearer view, even though that one doesn't have any zoom. But I knew he'd gone along there, I just caught a glimpse of him. So I thought, right, I'll just I'll shoot a bit high and take a shot at the, at the big tip of all, and hopefully hit something. And I did, but again, it ended up being a body hit, which wasn't great, but he goes along here and then goes up that bank that you can see in the background. The second shot was a complete miss, but I just thought, why not? I've already shot once. Let's just try and see if I can get another shot on him. But he ends up going up that bank in the background, and I do manage to find him pretty easily. But I just mark where I last saw him with my scope and where I think I shot him so that I can just keep an eye for those tracks. And now you're going to see me pick up the blood from the non-tip and realise it's a body hit. But anyway, I will let you watch me pick up those two bucks, and then we will have a look at what else happened on this hunt. So this is something I have never had happen before when hunting pumas. And even though I guess I've taken relatively few of them, considering I only reached my 25th puma kill today, but after chasing them a lot and seeing a lot and trying my best with pumas since they've been released, this is still something I had yet to see, which is actually two pumas coming in side by side to the electronic caller. Both of these are male. Both of them were max weight estimate. It was just insanely cool. So I started taking some screenshots, immediately hit record as soon as I realised there was two of them. And I just thought, this is amazing. So this particular spot I have been hunting pumas at regularly for the past couple of days. Just working out if I want to use this as a puma stand location. And I will say I have now put a stand up in this location and it is brilliant. I can have two or three pumas coming in at a time. And it's just so cool to see them and not be trying to hide and guess where they're going sort of thing. And just have someone that's just nice and calm and they come in like bobcats. So I decided I wanted to try and get both of these. I only managed to get a shot on the first one. I would have got a shot on that second one had he not gone behind that bank. But then following my own advice, I decided to not just immediately give up on it and run over to the other bank, the, like the opposite side of the river, and just see if I could see him there. Because there's that sloped cliff going up, and I thought, one, he might get stuck on that. Two, he might have done that half flea animation turn around stop look at you and so i thought maybe i'll just get a chance at a, a second shot and we'll see what happens and ended up not managing to get that but found his tracks for later reference now i'm going to let you see 
this puma when I pick him up, which ends up being my biggest puma yet. It's my first mounter puma, so really happy to actually now have one in the lodge that's a decent size. And then there's going to be some more puma action because this is now my new favourite puma swap. So as you can see here, we have another male puma crossing this river. This is only a few hundred meters, if that, from where I just shot the other one. And I, I love this particular spot. I have sat on this rock before and called in puma. I've done it since they've been released, really, when I, when I realized they come down this far. This is the rock that when I come down here to look for puma, this is where I will sit on this rock. However, I have now set up a tripod here because I did a couple of tests on this spot, which you're going to see the results of in a moment. And it just ends up just being just such a fantastic location because they can come from behind. There's This is towards the big lake uh, on Timbergold. I do show the location, uh, I think, in a, somewhere in the video along when I'm picking the animals up that I've been shooting from this rock. And then at, again at the end of the video, just in case you want to hunt Puma here, because I think this is probably the easiest spot to actually get them coming in. Like I said, I had two coming in at exactly the same time in one of these clips. I had, it, well, one came in spooked, didn't run very far, and actually kind of helps to prove the point that I, with what I've said before, that they don't always run very far. She actually stopped, bef like, way before she was going to go out of render distance. And then I had another one come in while she was just chilling and it was just insane. So this is now my puma spot and like I said I set up a stand so it's going to be very interesting to see what I can get from this location. And something else I'm going to say is if you hear the ambient puma call noises, there is a puma that is with that call. Because I get it, I've been getting it all the time along this river but not always been able to ping it on the hunter mate that they're, you know, to find the location of the animal. It just stick down the electronic cooler and they were just appearing. So if you hear an ambient puma noise, just go for it. Stick the cooler down. You will, there will be one somewhere, whether it comes in or what, how long it's going to take and what direction it's going to be coming from is hard to work out. But there is one there somewhere. And so that's why I'm keeping an eye out all the time amongst all these trees because, like I said, there's a lot of puma that seem to use this river at this specific location. So once again, I'm going to shoot this one from the rock. The other one was a good shot. It was a long shot. So he didn't go very far and he didn't spook anything else that was coming in. But I believe that this individual was possibly 
the uh, individual that I spooked when I shot the other puma when they came in as a pair because it's the same weight estimate so that was what I was going off of it could be a completely different one just the same um, like I say just the same weight estimate but either way there's another male puma down which was pretty good it was very it's very very good for earning money this spot I found so once again I, I do show that this the location for this it is at the end if you need to skip to the end if you don't want to hear me rambling if you skip to the end I do show the location of where I am and where my tripod stand is and everything so you will be able to see and use the spot for yourself but this is basically just clips of me shooting pumas from this location so I'm gonna leave you now to watch that if you would like to like I said skip to the end if you want just just want the location but I hope you've enjoyed watching and thank you thank you very much for watching Oh. <sighs>